Welcome once again to Ovanapedia, the one-stop center for Uganda's history and the history of the rest of the world. Again, it is Tony Geoffrey Owana, and in charge of the technologies, Herbert Semiano, who has instructed me not to forget reminding you of this important item. Herbert has made t-shirts of Ovanapedia, the one-stop center. And it is also emblazoned behind with some of our messages and our slogans. It is a t-shirt worth having, especially when you want to support us. Many of you have expressed interest in supporting us and this is going to be one of the ways. Herbert says it is only 35,000 shillings and when you convert it into dollars, it's very small money. Please just inform us of your order via our YouTube channel. Thank you very much. The t-shirt is good. This is mine. And I paid for it. We are still continuing with our series on the Constitution of Uganda, which was made in 1995 and which has since been amended about three times. And I'll tell you straight away that our past constitutions have a rich history also. The first constitution we did, the one that led us into independence, was done in London. Our people were exported to London, and I think in that frame of mind, they made the constitution that led us to independence. I remember Dr. Besige joking that some of the delegates who came from Chigezi to go to London came back speaking Ruchiga with a, 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 an English accent and saying they needed a translator because they no longer understood Ruchiga. That was Dr. Besige. Uh, but the element of it being ours was a bit eclipsed by the fact that it was done abroad in Lancaster and in Mobra. Still, it was a start. Maybe to be fair to our history, we must admit that the first really binding legal document Uganda had was the 1900 Uganda Agreement, which, which was done on 10th March 1900. We've since crossed a lot of bridges. How have we been amending our constitutions? We haven't. We've been either cancelling them out, shelving them, or unilaterally amending them just as happened in 1967 when uh, members of parliament were merely informed that the new constitution is in your drawers, just check. They didn't get a chance to debate things. So the first constitution we do as Ugandans was in fulfillment of one of the pledges of the NRM in its 10-point program, that Ugandans would get a chance to do their own constitution. A constitutional committee was appointed and the rest is history. But when these fellows came from the bush, they had said the new constitution will be made by the Army Council and the National Resistance Council, which is the parliament they came with from the bush. But they sat down and said, mm, not every Ugandan went to the bush. Are we going to make our own constitution? That's when it was suggested that a new body called the Constituent Assembly is the one but before that was reached, debate was made open. There was only one TV at that time. And in one of the shows, which was called NRM Special, which was moderated by the great Peter Swilikei Kisa, he had two guests. One was Sheikh Isha Kamoga of Uganda Muslim Supreme Council. The other was the Bishop of Namirembe Diocese, the late Misail Kauma. They had come as religious leaders to discuss the constitution on national TV. And that's what we are bringing you today. You will get to know a little more of the contribution to that great document that became our history. That is only possible on Oanapedia, the one-stop center for our history. Welcome back to 1994, when we are still debating what to put in the constitution. Hey. 
Good evening, viewers, and welcome to this edition of NRM Special. Tonight, we are going to discuss the Constituent Assembly Bill, which currently is the topical issue. And with me to discuss this issue are representatives from two religions. I have the Right Reverend Bishop Misairi Kauma of Namirembe Diocese. Good evening, viewers. And I have the Secretary General of the Uganda Muslim Supreme Council, uh, Haji Ishak Kamoga. Good evening, viewers. Yeah. Now, to get this discussion going, Bishop, could you comment on legal notice number one, which says that uh, the Military Council and the National Resistance Council will be sufficient to discuss and debate the Constitution? Uh, that is a, a very interesting uh, suggestion. But the Constitution being what it is, it might be better to have a new assembly discussing the Constitution. Because the Constitution must have, as far as possible, no bias. We don't want the future generations to say that this was an un NRM constitution. It must be the constitution of the people. And we must do all we can to show it's not NRM. Even if NRM has all the good intentions, it must be the constitution of the people so that it can be respected today and tomorrow and in the future, in the far future. That's what would my, 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 my feeling. Mm -hmm. But it must have certainly the guidance of NRM as the government in power. Mm -hmm. uh, Haji, what would you like to comment about the need for freshly elected uh, representatives to debate this bill? Yeah, I think, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I think that we need, really, a newly elected House to debate on this Constitution. The President NRC, for example, uh, these are members who have been elected by electoral committees from RRC 1 to RRC 1 and so forth. But if we have an elected constituent assembly by all the people, mm -hmm. I think that this, that will be a better representative sort of assembly than the present one. Mm -hmm. Now, what is your opinion about uh, sp the status of special bodies, like the youths, the women, and probably religious organizations? Do you think that this assembly uh, should constitute special representatives of these organizations or bodies? I think, if possible, all functioning organizations at the moment, where possible, should be represented so that they can speak as organizations representing that special interest in the community. Um, because if you chose someone to come, not at, at a representative of the youth, he would speak generally. But if his youth, he would specifically make points that uplift the well-being of the youths. For example, if you had religious leaders there, they could speak on behalf of religion in the country. Whereas if you had a religious man, like uh, Hajj here, who represented the community uh, from his village, he will have no mandate to speak for Muslims. Whereas if he went as a Muslim representative, he will make sure that what the interests of the Muslims are in the country are represented in the country, and so would the Christian. But Bishop, if you were to be elected from Namirembe, would it be possible for you to talk purely as Misairi Kavuma, different from uh, being a Christian and a Church of Uganda Christian at the, at the same time? My talk, I mean, I can never talk as a non-Christian, because mm. Christianity is within me and outside me mm. and everywhere. Yeah. But even then, if I spoke and said, there must be, on Sundays, there must be services in the morning and in the evening, and Christians must be allowed to go to their places of worship. They will say, excuse me, you're out of order. We are not talking about religion. We are not talking about, we're talking about the Constitution. I must be, I want the representative to have the opportunity to represent religious interests within the Constitution, specifically as such, not as a general subject, but as specific. Haji, what would you like to comment? Um, as Bishop has put it, it is very important that different groups which matter in the country should be represented specifically in this Constituent Assembly. These people who are going to be members of the Constituent Assembly 
elected from the different areas are going to represent the views of the people. But there are some groups which need special representation, as the bishop has said it, mm -hmm. the religious denominations. These need special representation. In fact, it is unfortunate that uh, previously it had not been put there that religion should be represented. But it is our feeling, strong feeling that religions should also be represented specifically in the Constituent Assembly and the youth and the women and all other organizations that matter because these are not going to, the elected members are not going to give out views for these particular groups. Even if I was elected as just a member from my village, for example, I would be representing the views of my people in the village, but not the views of the religion. Now, could you just give us an example of what you think would be purely religious matter that probably could not be put by ordinary representative? Okay, they are quite... Uh, I may not... I may be a Muslim and not qualified to give out particular instances of Islamic faith. Whereas if I went as an, a religious re representative, I would be briefed on what issues I could present to the assembly. I just wanted you to give us an example. For example, if you well, were for to... for example, uh, as the bishop has put it, mm. there is for worship in the church or in the mosque. Muslims, for example, the, slaughter, the slaughtering of animals, as has been the case, such issues. Uh, we also, the Constituent Assembly Bill raises the issue of appointees by the president. It says the president will appoint the chairman and 15 other delegates to the Constituent Assembly. What is your view about this? Do you think uh, it impedes on democracy? Do you think uh, it gives the president too much power? It is difficult to discuss this with a man who is our president now, who is President Yoel Kaguta Museven, mm -hmm. a man specially gifted in being fair. But we want to when we discuss it, to move out of individual names mm -hmm. and talk as if there was no name mm -hmm. to discuss. Um, I should think for the fairness of the exercise and uh, avoiding people implicating unnecessarily, because when you debate a thing like this, you've got many interested parties some are for the government, mm -hmm. some are against the government, some are indifferent. Mm -hmm. To be able to meet all these, uh, all these, I would leave nominations by the president of the chairman out of the question and suggest that probably to safeguard the whole thing, mm -hmm. we've got our uh, National Resistance Council, the top, the top parliamentary uh, group which has been elected mainly by the people on the whole. Mm -hmm. Perhaps the chairman of this should be elected by the whole NRC council, the parliamentary group, which we have now, mm -hmm. uh, which I mean, the president is part of that. But it's, I, I would rather it comes from a group as a whole rather than from the president as an individual to avoid misunderstanding. Uh -huh. uh, Bishop, what you are saying is that you have nothing against the president appointing people in principle, but you just are worried about some kind of uh, discontent arising out of such an exercise, and you would therefore prefer that yes, I would, I mean, if we avoid another, this. Another president, I don't know, but <laughs> a man we've seen is, the way he's, he's acted for these seven years, mm. and I think for him, as a, his caliber, I would not doubt, mm -hmm. but for the sake of being fair and just and to avoid unnecessary accusations, I would rather the parliament did elect the chairman. And if not the parliament, it could be if we, when we've elected all the constituent assembly for the constitution, that out of their number, they meet with the guidance and they choose a chairman. That's a, another, another possibility. Yeah, Haji Kamoga, what would you like to comment on this? Really, I share the same opinion. Um, we have got a man, our president, who has fought for his nation, who has the interest in the nation, and if he chose a chairman of the Constituent Assembly, I think nobody would quarrel about that. Mm -hmm. But anyway, as the bishop said, to safeguard grumbles from different sections of the nation, 
and that perhaps he put the chairman to guide the, 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 the assembly towards the, the, the wishes of the president and perhaps of the NRM. Mm. That's the only reason why I would suggest also that uh, either the president NRC in their sitting elect or appoint a chairman of the Constitutional Assembly or the members after the elections of the Constitutional Assembly they sit together and among themselves or well, even from outside they can elect somebody from outside not among themselves elect the chairman for that assembly. now do you think this view which you both of you hold that uh, the president is held in high esteem and that the majority of the population would respect his nominations why should we have fear of maybe a small minority uh, being discontented about such uh, a move where the president appoints or uh, some nominees the constitution is much wider than the government because it represents everybody that's why i would rather have something that nobody will question even the strongest opponent of the present government is that possible, Bishop? Do you think we can have such an ideal consider that everybody, the 17 million of us, will be in agreement? At least, even if we can't, we must aim at being nearest to that. Mm -hmm. uh, there's another issue which is raised by the Constituent Assembly Bill, that uh, leaders of political parties should not, this is direct, that they should not be elected to become chairman or vice chairman of the Assembly. Do you think uh, this is fair? Do you think um, maybe... It, uh, it touches on the rights of some individuals to, to, to participate fully in this exercise. Uh, Haji, maybe you could start. Right. Um, the Constitutional Assembly we are going to elect is just people's assembly to discuss the Constitution. Okay, the leader of a political party can stand as a member of the Assembly. But to remove this influence of the parties, now that the parties are not in action as yet until the constitution is out it will be really unfair very unfair to have a leader of a particular party to be the chairman of the constitutional assembly and in fact we are opposed to that very much and should be opposed if there was any means of opposing it the leaders of the political parties should not for the sake of not people saying that perhaps uh, this one misled or tried to drive the constitutional assembly to his own political beliefs and whatnot. So the, the, the leaders of these political parties should avoid to be elected as chairman or chairman of the, uh, of the Constitutional Assembly. But Haji, we are saying that these political parties are a reality in our society. We know they exist and we think that in future or in the past they have actually led this country. We think that in the future they may be in a position to lead this country. Why should we fear these people coming to such um, position of uh, deciding our, our constitution, debating our constitution? Uh, uh, Bishop. Um, thank you for that question. It's a difficult question. The leaders of parties, I must say, are honorable men. I just commented earlier on that his Excellency has all the gifts we need and interest of this nation more than anybody I have met. For the same reason I gave about him, I would rather that the chairman of the Constituent Assembly should not be a leader of any uh, political party. I would rather, because he, if he's the chairman, he would be misunderstood in the same way as I mentioned before. And it should be a man who has got no political leadership of that kind. I mean, he may belong to a political party, mm -hmm. and I mean, for, for the time being, political parties are not functional. But even then, we know who the leaders are. So I think the leaders should not chair, because, you know, political parties are like, uh, I don't know, I would not, they are so the love of them is so strong mm -hmm. that you cannot afford mm -hmm. not to bias the discussion according uh, to your this party. Raises, this raises also the issue of um, people representing their parties in the Constituent Assembly. What do you think? Do you think it would be fair representation to have people specifically from the different parties into the Assembly to debate the Constitution in the interest of their parties? If the parties were functional, 
and not under uh, a, a quiet stage, mm -hmm. that would be different. But since it is what it is now that was seen as important for the parties to safeguard security, the peace, and the unit of the country that the parties so far are not functional. I would rather, when we elect the assembly, we act as if parties are not functional now, although the interests of the people in the parties are in many are there. Yeah, I would like and to... Mr. Chairman, I think uh, there's, there's also a possibility that after the making of the constitution, the present parties will have been abolished and new parties come up. Then if you come yeah, as a DP yeah, yeah. and the DP will not be there, you come as UPC, the UPC will not be then what is the purpose? Yeah, well, I think that's a very valid point because yes. the assembly itself will be debating the future exactly. of the parties. So yes. uh, we must assume that they first uh, take a low profile and see whether they will continue exactly. to exist. Exactly. Let yeah. the assembly come in as they come into the, in, in, uh, into the parliament, present parliament. Mm -hmm. They come in as individuals on their village. Mm -hmm. They don't come in in the same way. So they should maintain the same position as they have in the NRC? I should think so. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So... Um, the Constituent Assembly Bill also raises the issue of what they describe as contentious matters of local nature. I think I would not be very mistaken if I refer to such things like uh, the traditional hereditary leadership things, issues which are local to certain areas and to certain groups of people. The bill thinks that this should not be debated in the, in the, in the Assembly, but should only be negotiated at the local level with the people to whom they are particularly relevant. What do you think? Do you think such things like um, the traditional hereditary positions of certain people should be discussed nationally in this uh, assembly bill? Bishop. That is uh, a very touchy question. And I hope my personal views on that will be understood. I've been to Bogisho. And there, people take circumcision very seriously. Men, circumcision. Supposing it was of a national nature and had to be discussed whether circumcision should be allowed into the country, it would be very unfair if I, from Buganda area, where we don't circumcise, said, no circumcision, or yes circumcision, because I don't know what I'm talking about, because I have no interest, I have no concern, uh, it doesn't affect me whether yes or no. So I think on questions like hereditary leaders, that should entirely be left to areas where they affect the, the, the population, and not where people are not affected, or do not understand by the nature of their, it's not their fault yeah. that they had no kings. <laughs> no, is it the fault of those who have kings that they've got kings? So it just happened, and, and this is Uganda, a country of variety, and we must respect the variety we have in all ways possible. And the way you can respect variety without misunderstanding, in this case, is to leave these major questions of uh, sectional groups, uh, sectional areas, to the sections where it concerns them. Uh, Haji Kamoga, what do you think are really the contentious issues of national uh, nature that could or should be put to a referendum in case they are not successfully debated in the Constituent Assembly? Put to a referendum? Uh, what do you think? What issues do you think um, will need the whole consensus of the nation? Uh, well, I, as far as these traditional beliefs of different religions are concerned, I don't think that uh, any referendum, national referendum is essential mm -hmm. because these are ideas, ideologies to a certain group of people. Mm -hmm. You cannot put it to a referendum for the, uh, of the whole nation mm -hmm. because you cannot debate somebody having his own home, cannot come and decide something in my own home. Mm -hmm. I've got my home, I know, I know how I rule it, I know how I go about it, so you cannot come from outside and say, no, you are doing this, you shouldn't do that, let's debate on it. No. Mm -hmm. If these, uh, for example, kingships, mm -hmm. well, there may be some parts of the country which had kingdoms before, but presently they don't see the value of them. Mm -hmm. If we debate on, the, if we put the referendum over these king, kingdoms, 
in the whole nation. And some particular part does not want the kingdoms, although they had them, then it would be useless. It is better to have different groups, Buganda having its own referendum, if possible, Buganda alone, Busoga to have its own referendum over their king, Toro to have its own referendum over their king, but not the whole nation. Because some parts don't know the value of these kings. We know, we who have them, we know the value of these kings. Those who don't have them, they don't know the value. So they cannot debate on this. They don't, they don't even need a referendum over that. This is an issue for Buganda, for Bunyoro, for Toro. But I must add that uh, when the sections or the areas which are concerned by these special cultural, mm -hmm. cultural needs, mm -hmm. when they have decided on what they need, the, the rest of the country, acting like good citizens, should respect what these sections have decided mm -hmm. and what they've decided should be part of the national constitution. Mm -hmm. Now, the, another issue raised by the Constituent Assembly Bill is the question of the people who will organize the assembly. Uh, commissioners, these are maybe civil servants who will be responsible for organizing the whole thing and, and uh, getting people together and the ideas together. Now, the bill suggests that the president should appoint these people. What do you think about it? Um, again, I go back to the width of the responsibility. You want to make sure that men who are going to organize have the love of the nation at heart. You must know that there are two types of people in Uganda. There are those who don't want to see Uganda peaceful and rather see it disturbed. So one has got to be careful that you don't let an important thing like this be organized by men whose interest is to see Uganda in chaos. How can you make sure that you get men who are not interested in chaos but in peaceful development? That's where I would say that uh, the president, as a leading man in the nation, and the present parliament should have a say in who is going to organize. And probably I would rather that the present parliament together elects its supervisors and advises the president. So the, you, you feel that the NRC should be the one to elect these people? Yes. And uh, then the president approves? Or right. should it be well, the he, other way around? He's got to approve, of course. Uh, got to approve. Uh -huh. uh, I mean, thought, uh, Mr. Chairman, don't, I don't see any reason why the president himself cannot appoint, or the cabinet cannot appoint these supervisors of these elections for the Constituent Assembly. Mm -hmm. uh, th there is no fear, there is no, the, 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 there is no need even to have a, to debate on somebody being appointed by the NRC to debate on the, that particular person. Mm -hmm. The president, mm -hmm. and in fact the government, the present government we have, is struggling to see that U Uganda is at peace. Mm -hmm. Ugandans have had terrible instances throughout mm -hmm. since we got independence. Mm -hmm. This is perhaps the government that has tried to show the interest to see that the nation is free of these disturbances. We are at peace. And if the government elected those people, I'm sure they are going to elect people who are of high caliber to see that the elections are gone through successfully. And uh, just another interesting point. Uh, the bill suggests that 100,000 fees should be levied on whoever wants to stand to be elected as a, a member in the, the Constituent Assembly. What do you think? Doesn't this eliminate quite a number of poor men who could be... Uh, what do you think? Well, Mr. Chairman, I think the, 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 these people who are going to stand to be elected have got the interest of the country. Yes. In order to feel uh, that you are really touched to what you are going to discuss, I think this contribution wouldn't be bad. Well, I think uh, in the villages, in the countryside, 100,000 is a lot of money. What do you think, Bishop? I think I believe in cost sharing. Um, our government is not a very rich government. And we are trying to use every penny as carefully as we can. You know uh, what, what you're going through. So I would rather that whoever wants to stand can contribute, if he's really a man who is worthy. I mean, and was on my video, and I don't have the money. I would contribute to help him. I mean, I think they should contribute. And also I know when they come to the assembly, 
they will be paid one day. Yeah, I think so. So I think they should take initiative yeah. in contributing to the government. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. I think the discussion really um, is very lively and I'm sure it will continue with the, the general public. Um, with me this evening has been Bishop Misairi Kauma and uh, Haji Ishak Kamoga from the Uganda Muslim Supreme Council. And we hope that in subsequent programs, we shall also invite representatives from other religions to discuss this important question of the Constituent Assembly Bill. Good viewing. Welcome back from 1994. You've seen the ideas that were presented by these great religious leaders. And all this has been possible because Owanapedia is dedicated to what we do. Herbert Semiano says I should remind you of the t-shirts of Owanapedia which are going for a mere 35,000 shillings. And this will come as your support to Owanapedia to execute what we know how to do best. Permit me to thank you again. And to say, don't forget to subscribe. Cheers.